Just finished bouncing my shoulders. Come on, Shamari. I need to see them shoulders bouncing. Welcome back, royal family. I missed you guys. I'm back to give you my recap of the Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 11 Reunion Part 2. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen it already. If you haven't, well, I'll try to give uh, the best recap that I can. Um, this is part two of the season 11 reunion. It's a three-part sit-down. So um, last night, the part two aired. Uh, it was interesting. It was interesting. They they left the cliffhanger at the uh, at the end. You know, they, they tried to build up a little bit of momentum. You know, um, I'm just going to kind of skate through because it didn't really give me much. It seems to me that part three is probably going to get into the topic that was talked about um, since the season ended, which is uh, Nini and Closet Gate 2019. So Nini, of course, is still in the hot seat. She's bantering back and forth with people. Um, Portia and Candy discuss the whole situation with Portia's fiance. Um, you know, Candy had some interesting things to say about Portia's fiance, which I thought was kind of, hmm, considering how much flack she received when she first got with Todd, you know, her mother was not feeling Todd whatsoever. So she got a lot of flack about, about Todd and she obviously returned the favor to, uh, to Portia. Uh, they say that they're in a good place as far as their relationship is concerned, but I don't know. Candy seems to be a, a bit of a grudge holder and she may not overtly, you know, be shady towards you, but she'll, you know, throw her little digs in when she can. Nevertheless, you know, they start talking about uh, that situation where um, Jasmine was brought on the show. Candy apparently brought uh, Jasmine on the show, who is said to be an ex of um, Dennis, who is Portia's fiance. Eh, boring, boring, boring. Then they also uh, talk about, as far as Portia and Candy is concerned, they start talking about the fact that when Portia showed up to Todd's birthday party, um, that she had, you know, a couple of drinks. They went back and forth as far as the timeline of how pregnant Portia was or wasn't. I mean, uh, I don't know how Candy knows how pregnant Portia was. Portia said that she was two months, two or three, three months or so, and she was showing. Candy said, no, um, you got pregnant at the end of July and Todd's birthday party, or you got pregnant at the end of June and Todd's birthday party was in August. Why you're keeping up with her um, ovaries, Candy, it's a little weird. But whatever, you probably use that as ammunition because you still have an unresolved beef with Portia. But to make you look good, you're probably not going to say so. Moving along, you know, Nene um, is discussing back and forth with Eva. Eh, didn't really give me much. Wasn't really interesting. Uh, Marlo makes her debut. Uh, Marlo was actually on this uh, part two of the reunion, and Marla and Marlo and uh, Eva were going back and forth, and they kind of highlighted the shade that they these two women throw amongst each other. And of course, you know they the group unanimously decided that you know Eva is the one that threw the best shade. Corny, corny, corny. Shamara shoulder bounce Devoe. Talks about um, throwing up on Eva's dress and her shoes when they had the bi wig party at Nini's house. And, ah, <laughs> uh, Shamari. For her to be a freshman of this season and the reunion, she's really holding her own. So Shamari basically says that, yes, you know, I threw up on your shoes and, you know, she seemed very apologetic about it. Apparently, she tried to get the shoes clean, but then realized that the cost to clean the shoes cost more than the shoes. Busted, Eva. Not that Eva was probably was trying to flex, but I don't know. I, I Eva's giving me a real snooty, snotty vibe during this reunion. So, <laughs> Shamari, Shamari basically brought a gift card and said, you know, you got those shoes from Zara. And, you know, um, Eva said, yeah, in Morocco. She said, right, but you, you got them from, from Zara. $70, girl. So she actually brought a $70 gift card and handed it to her. I thought that was cute. It was, it was fun. Uh, fun shade, if there is such a thing. Then moving along, 
like I said, um, Marlo and uh, Eva, they go back and forth. Now, getting to the more interesting part to me, Greg comes out. Greg looks great. I don't, you probably know following um, Nini on social media and following all of the uh, blogs that Greg actually recently finished his last round of chemo. I don't know if he had... Um, a PET scan, a PET scan basically determines after you're done with chemo and or radiation, a PET scan is like, you know, a test to check to see if the chemo and radiation is working, if the cancer is, um, now in remission or if the cancer is spreading to let you know, basically it lets doctors and the patient know if the radiation or the treatment of choice is working. So I don't know if he's had a PET scan, but I do know that he just finished his last round of chemo. Um, and he looks good. You know, I mean, he looked a little bit sad on the couch, um, a little bit uncomfortable, probably because they were going to be discussing things that were on the show that he probably wasn't comfortable with. You know, Nini discussed, you know, when he came out and Nini was very open about, as she was throughout the season, she was very open about the state of their marriage currently. And, you know, it's just sad. You know, it's sad. They were divorced once before and they did get remarried. So it's kind of like, ugh, you know, hopefully she don't, she won't have to go through a, uh, another divorce. So we will see. We're keeping a positive frame of mind, but I am a firm believer in you have to do what makes you happy. And if no longer being married to Greg, same thing goes for Greg, no longer being married to Nini is going to essentially make them happier and they feel that they will be more amicable as friends, then, then do it. Never mind what the media says, never mind the judgments that you're going to receive because people are going to talk anyway, whether you do good or bad. So they go into talking about how Nini was very forthcoming and open about the issues in the marriage between her and, uh, and Greg. Nini did state that she wasn't sleeping in the room with Greg because of his colostomy bag. Andy asked, you know, is that the case? Is, are you still no longer sleeping in the room with Greg? She honestly answered, no, you know, uh, they are seeing, um, a counselor, Dr. Jeff, who was on an earlier season when can I think it was candy called all of the girls to come together in a counseling session so they can iron out their issues. <laughs> and Nini basically said, um, you know, you guys are not going to gang up on me. You know, and she walked out and she wasn't really fond of Dr. Jeff, but Greg chose the counselor. And it is something, there is something to be said at the fact that Nini is willing to actually go to counseling and of all people, you know, see Dr. Jeff. So it looks like they're trying to work on their marriage. Um, Greg stated that he would like to work on his marriage, salvage his marriage, if it's something that can be salvaged. Nini, uh, she couldn't really answer. She didn't really say she stated that, you know, she doesn't have an answer for that right now. So we kind of see um, a little bit more of what it is that they're kind of going through. Um, she is going through a lot and we don't know everything. Not that we have to know everything to pass judgment as, as people tend to do. Whether you have all the facts or none of the facts, people are going to pass judgment. But it does seem like not only dealing with Greg's terminal illness, um... That's one issue, but it seems like there was, you know, the marriage, like she said, the marriage was rocky prior to Greg being terminally ill. So she stated that Greg was diagnosed with stage three, uh, cancer, um, on Cinco de Mayo. She said that she would never forget it. Um, I can only imagine what he was going through, uh, you know, so, you know, the girl said that they were there for her. Portia got very, very emotional, um, and stated that, you know, I prayed for you, my mother, my family, we prayed for you and Greg and Nini was just very unmoved. You know, she gives me, I'm sick and tired of the sick and tired and I'm over this and I'm over all of this back and forth. That's what she was giving me. Some people are saying she's passive aggressive, but obviously she's hurting and some things, I, if you're a friend to someone like for instance, Cynthia and Nini had a long relationship. I just feel in certain instances, the benefit of the doubt should be granted to some people. Maybe not in this case. I'm just saying, cause everybody who has an opinion as far as the housewives and as far as Nini that I've conversed with say that Nini is, you know, out of line. Nini needs to be off the show, but I'm taking a different angle. I'm sorry. I just, I'm not a bandwagon type of person. Um, 
I kind of look at what is not being said. I kind of search for what is not being said. And even though Nini is displaying this so-called passive aggressive behavior and she's moody and having breakdowns, I'm looking at what's not being said and what's not being expressed. So, and you can see it, you can see it. Nini, she's just tired. Marlo did have her back when some of the ladies had their opinions about Nini shutting people out. And um, once she's done with someone, she's done with someone, you know, they accuse her of being the type of woman that if you're not kissing her behind, then she wants nothing to do with you. And that could be a stretch because there's a lot of things that I believe that we don't see. You have to remember, this is a production. So there are things that's going to be chopped and screwed and edited to fit a narrative that the producers, the writers, and the directors want to push. They're going to push a certain narrative for ratings, rightfully so. Everybody's got to get paid, right? So we're not there. So, I mean, I, Nene wasn't very argumentative. Um... You know, Marlo had her back, whether people think it's fake friendship or not. You know, Cynthia let Marlo know, hey, hold up. You know, I was a friend when you weren't a friend, so you can't say anything. You know, Marlo did say that she feels that Portia's being genuine, which I agree with. And she believes that um, Cynthia is being genuine as well. So I'm hoping that this is just like another hiccup on the long journey uh, of friendship and I do hope that Portia and Nini can rekindle their friendship or salvage what's left of their friendship. Nini kept saying, none of these girls are my friends. So she seems to be over it. She seems to just be dealing with a lot aside from this show. Obviously, we got a little bit of a glimpse. And as I said in my previous video, caring for someone who has a terminal illness, i.e. cancer, I've done so. I was a caregiver to my only aunt who passed away almost two years ago from ovarian cancer. And I can tell you whether it's grouchy or whatever word it is that you want to use, you know, they, in my experience was kind of similar in a sense where, you know, my family member wasn't the nicest, but I didn't take it personal. You know, I, I don't know Nini's thought process. I don't know. I'm glad to hear that her and Greg are going to counseling, but I don't know her outlet. Everybody has to have somebody that they can go to. And if you feel that you're dealing with someone or you're caring for someone, yes, it's not about you. We know that. But at the end of the day, if you can't take care of yourself emotionally and mentally, you're not going to be a good caregiver to, to someone who is facing or has to come to terms with a terminal illness and their mortality. It's not an easy thing to experience. I'm telling you from experience, it's not an easy thing to watch. And even though I wasn't losing friends left and right or, or having outbursts or anything like that, um, I did have to kind of put the pause on certain friendships because I felt like people weren't there for me. You know, this didn't just affect me. You know, my family member had uh, a child. Um, my family member also had a sibling. It's my mother's only sister. You know, um, my grandmother is still alive. This is my grandmother's child. You know, so there's a lot of moving parts to this. So it's kind of like, you know, you have to be strong for everyone. You, you know what I mean? So it's not easy. And like I said in my previous video, I'm not giving Nini a pass, but I'm giving her a pass, you know? And if I was on the other end of this and I had a friend, I can only talk about what I would do. Um, and I had a friend who was actually going through all of these emotional issues and these breakdowns and dealing with other things that we don't see. I mean, if they were being a little bit bitchy, if they were being a little bit moody, if the friendship meant that much to me and the friendship was so long, I think I would be able to look past that. That's just, that's just me. So, I mean, the reunion didn't really give too much. You know, they teased us in the first one. They got the momentum going in the second one. They did leave off getting ready to talk about what happened in uh, Nini's closet. And, you know, that Andy Cohen boy, oof. You know, he really, he really, he just, it's not really a fan of his whatsoever. But you did see Nene kind of pep up and say, listen, you know, I had a breakdown. I can't promise that I'm not going to have any more breakdowns. I'm a human being. You know, it is what it is. And I feel like this is another point that I wanted to make. Everybody is saying how Nene should and should not act. Yet, none of these ladies that we know of or that they admitted to 
have been in her shoes as far as dealing with a spouse that you possibly are thinking about divorcing and then them becoming terminally ill. So if you, you've never been in her shoes, so how can you tell her how she should and should not act? That alone would offend me and I probably wouldn't have much to say to them at a reunion either. But, um, so next week is part three and the final installment of the Housewives of Atlanta. And that is where they're going to dig into, um, the situation that happened in Nini's home. I, I don't know where this is going, but I will say this, you know, you can't come to my house and violate my property, violate my privacy, and then tell me how to act. It's just not happening. So we'll see what part three of the reunion will bring. Be sure to check out my other content. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Get down in the comments. Tell me if you saw part two of the reunion, what you thought. You know, there was a lot of miscellaneous stuff to skate past, but I do feel the um, the most interesting part, to me anyway, was when Greg and Nene uh, sat down and talked. Also, when Nene made the comment about if I don't work, Greg doesn't eat. I think people are blowing that way out of proportion. If Nene doesn't work, neither her nor her husband nor her son and whoever else she's taking care of financially will eat. What's so wrong about that? She is the provider. You know, what's what's wrong about that? I don't know. People don't like Nene, so they're going to look for every reason to nitpick everything she said. Her behavior, I mean, what is, like I said in my first uh, video, what do you expect? She's been attacked. She's sick and tired of the pettiness. Everything she says is used against her, whether she's right or wrong. But what did you expect? She's not going to argue with you guys. Did you expect her to come with roses and pass them out to everybody like it's The Bachelor? I don't think so. You should know Nene well enough by now. But I'm signing off. Hopefully, we will meet again next week when part three and the final installment of the reunion is aired. Tell me what you think. Once again, or not even once again, as always, royal family, peace.